In today's video, I'm going to be discussing what is the VA's compensation and pension ACE examination, when is it prohibited from being used, what are some of the ways that VA employees are using this against veterans, and did I use ACE examinations when I was a former Raider? Make sure you stick around. Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dwayne Kimball, owner and founder of KMD89 VA Claims Consulting, United States Army veteran and retired VA rating specialist. Today's video, I am going to be discussing ACE examinations. Yes, VA compensation and pension ACE examinations. But before I get into today's video, make sure you go out to my website, pick up my new book, VA Claims Success. I guarantee you it is is a game changer with your VA claim. Now, today's video, ACE examinations. Before I even get started, I'm gonna let you know I hate these. I think if the VA gets rid of anything, it should be ACE examinations. I think they're horrible and I feel that they shouldn't be used, but I'm gonna educate you today on what they are, when they're prohibited, and how VA employees are using it against veterans so you are informed. So let's go ahead and get into it. Slide number one. Here is slide number one. This is um, the M21 manual reference examinations based on ACE. Now, what does ACE stand for? ACE stands for acceptable clinical evidence. Acceptable clinical evidence. And it reads, in lieu of scheduling an in-person examination, VHA, which stands for Veterans Healthcare Administration, and contract examiners, LHI, VS Services, Optimum, QTC, and contract examiners generally have the option to complete a DBQ based on review of existing paper and or electronic medical evidence. They may also conduct an interview with the claimant, examinations based upon medical records and history without an in-person exam, clinical examinations, or testing are known as ACE examination or ACE process. That's why I hate it. That's why I don't like it. That's why I think they should get rid of it. Let me give you an example. Vet is, let's say a vet is 30% for migraines, and they can just come in. They feel they meet the 50% criteria. They come in for an increase. And that's on the 526ZZ. That's the only thing they ask. I'm claiming an increase in my service-connected migraines. They don't get any treatment at a VA medical center. So there's no evidence there. The third-party examiner says, oh, I'm going to do an ACE exam. Well, there's no record of this, 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 and this. I'm going to confirm and continue that 30%. And the rater rates it. At a minimum, that third party examiner should have called the veteran and asked the veteran, does your service connected migraines interfere with your employment? Yes or no? Are your migraines completely, very completely prostrating? Yes or no? If the answer is yes to both those questions, which probably can be asked in less than 60 seconds, 60 seconds, the veteran should be increased to 50%. So understand that example that I just gave you. Two questions that that doctor could have picked up the phone and called the veteran and said, hey, does it interfere with your employment? Are they very completely prostrating? Yes and yes, 50%. Now, if that happens to you, this is the way you get around it. If your service connected for migraines, and on that 526, I'm claiming to increase my service connected migraines, include the 50% criteria in your lay statement. Because if the doctor does an ACE exam, doesn't call you, and that 
DBQ shows you st should stay at 30% and that veteran rates it on a holiday review, you're telling them, hey, that Raider should have used my lay statement, which states, I informed the VA, I'm claiming an increase in my migraines, the very completely prostrate, and they interfere with my employment. They could, the Raider, at a minimum, could grant the increase based off that. Okay, that's the workaround. Now, let's keep going. Slide number two. Here in slide number two, this is another M21 manual reference. Okay, I'm not going to go through all of it, but I'm just going to cover what's in red. And the name of this M21 is categories of examinations for which the age process is prohibited when they're not allowed to use it. The age process is not available in the following categories of examinations. Examinations when necessary electronic medical records are not available for examiner review, meaning they don't have access to your records, so they shouldn't be doing an ACE exam. They need to look at your records. Separation health assessments in support of IDS and BDD claims. BDD stands for Benefit Delivery Discharge. This is for active duty personnel, so all the, those exams should be done in person. General medical examinations, initial and review traumatic brain injury examinations, and mental disorder examinations. Let me uh, tell you about this. As a Raider, I would see VA employees requesting ACE exams, doctors doing ACE exams for mental conditions, whether they are service-connected or not, and the Raider rating the case because they didn't know about this M21 manual reference. It even happened to one of our clients. And so when we looked at the rating decision, first question I asked the client, hey, did you get a CMP exam? She said, no, no one called me. I didn't get a FedEx or UPS package in the mail saying show up here on this date. They did an ACE exam. Guess what the argument was on appeal? Now, they had a DBQ that the VA could have used. That VA employee just chose not to use it, okay? So the argument was, hey, my DBQ should have been used. The ACE exam shouldn't have trumped my DBQ because it was prohibited as I was claiming a mental condition. I had a mental diagnosis, okay? Client eventually won based on that education. That is the power of education. Veterans, stop thinking that VA employees do not make mistakes. The Raiders should have caught that when they were adjudicating and completing that rating decision that the ACE exam was no good because it's prohibited under this M21 as it pertains to mental disorder examinations. So now that you know what ACE exam is, when it's not to be used and prohibited from being used. Now I'm going to tell you when the employees use this ACE exam against veterans. And it's not all employees, but some. And when that is, is when the veteran submits a sufficient DBQ and refuses to go to the VA CMP exam because the veterans say, hey, wait a minute. You put the DBQs on your website for public use. The veteran downloads it, takes it to their private doctor, and guess what else they take to their private doctor? The claims file. Get it on CD. And their examiner reviews it. That makes that DBQ sufficient along with other criteria that was met, okay? And so the VA employee or the VA, yeah, the VA employee gets win. Oh, the veteran refused the exam because they said they had a sufficient DBQ. And the VA employee says, or make the decision, now I'm going to develop to deny and I'm going to show you who's boss. I'm going to do an ACE exam. And VA employees that don't know about this uh, M21 manual reference, when it's prohibited, is when it's dealing with, that DBQ is dealing with a mental condition, okay? Now, that's when VA employees 
use an ACE exam that I've seen against the veteran, and they shouldn't do that, okay? So I know a lot of people may say, well, Dwayne, you're a rating specialist. Did you ever schedule an ACE exam? And to, to be totally honest with you, it's been five years since I rated, and I cannot recall. If I did, I could probably count on one hand, but I made sure I had other evidence where I could have been able to increase that veteran or service connect that veteran, and I just needed some basic information as it pertains to some residuals or something like that. But I was not and still not a fan of ACE exams. But I can tell you this, if a veteran submitted a sufficient nexus statement per the VA guidelines, not what the veteran thought was sufficient, but they submitted a sufficient DB, I'm sorry, a sufficient nexus statement per the VA guidelines, I would request a CMP exam, not an ACE exam, but I would not request a medical opinion from that third party examiner because the veteran has already provided that. Now, you're not going to see that. Well, there's a slim chance you'll see Raiders do that today. They could do it, but I haven't seen it, all right? But now you know what an ACE exam is. You know when it's prohibited. Also, you know how some VA employees use this ACE exam against veterans. So if you fall into that category, go back and look at those M21 manual references, and there's other information out there on ACE exams. So make sure you get educated so you have full transparency. With that being said, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification button, and don't forget to share this video with your fellow veterans. Thank you.